Hey guys, Darren with the Scott Group with this week's tips. Five mistakes sellers make when choosing an agent to sell their home. Mistake number one, choosing an agent solely on the price that they say that they're gonna get for your home. If, you have, if you're interviewing three agents, which you should, and you have two agents that are saying that, hey, do you know what, we can get you 725 to 750 for your home, and then you have a third agent come in and say, hey, we're gonna get you 775 to 790. Look at the paperwork that they bring in. Look at the comp analysis. Is the neighborhood selling at 750 or 790? If it's selling at 750 and this person's saying that they're selling at 790 and you choose them for that reason only, that agent's trying to buy your listing. We have a lot of companies out there that say, go out and get listings no matter what you have to do. It will oversell your home. What's gonna happen is you're gonna be up here at 790 and have to walk it back. It's gonna be on the market for a long time. Buyers are gonna look at it and go, why are all the homes selling in 14 days, 21 days? Why has this one been on there for 30 days? Do not make that mistake. Do not pick your agent solely on the fact that they say they're gonna get you more money for the home. Number two, start high and see how it goes. We've had people in the past, past clients even, hey, do you know what? I know it's selling for 750. Let's put it at 825 and see how it goes for a while. We might be able to get that. Here's my experience. We start off at 825, it sits there. Homes are selling at 750. I'm not gonna overpay for this neighborhood or this home. Pretty much all the homes are gonna be similar within the neighborhood. That home's gonna sit there. You're gonna to have to walk it back. And again, what's wrong with the home? Why is it sitting on the market? When you, sit, when you market the house for sale, choose a price that is realistic. Don't you want the most money in the shortest per period of time? I know we do. Number three, don't cut corners on prepping your home. Now, when we go to list a home, we bring in a designer, we look at your house. Do we need to touch up paint? Do we need to remove some pictures? Do we need to depersonalize the home? Don't cut corners, guys. Let's get some of that personalization or clutter out of the way. Let's touch up the paint. Let's put in a new light bulb. The worst thing that you can do is get ready for sale and skimp on the little stuff. It does pay off, guys. We're not talking about major remodels here, just touching up. Number three, curb appeal. Just as in the inside, goes for the outside. Are the flowers nice and fresh? Do you have mulch around the edges of the plant? It's the long cut. Bicycles put away. Not too many cars in the driveway. It all makes sense. We've had in the past, buyers pull up to a home. Hey, do you know what? I really don't want to look at this house. Look at it from out here. If they're not taking care of the outside, do we really need to go in? Don't be that house. Number five, availability. Guys, let's get a lockbox on the house. Let's be as available as possible. If I have 10 homes that I have to show my clients one day and we have seven that are open availability and one that is a 24 to 48 hour notice. Owner has to be there. We got to do this. We got to do that. We're going to go see those seven, other seven first. Do you want to be eighth or ninth on the list? No, I want to be one or two because most of the time buyers are going to go out. They're going to look at the house, especially in this market and go, wow, this is the house that I want. Let's put in a bid now. Do we need to see the other? No, let's put in a bit. Be as available as possible, guys. All right, those are the five tips for this week. Hope to see you on the next one. Don't forget to hit the like button down below, and thanks for viewing.